Alrighty. That's my Bobby. That's my Bobby. Okay, hi. I'm Emily. And this is little Miss Bobby. And I'm going to tell the story about how she came into the world. Hey, don't cover your face, girl. The world wants to see your pretty face. We're not going to make this video an hour long. At least I'll do my best. Okay, so... I don't even know where to start. Um, I guess I'll just kind of start with how, how I saw things going. I wanted to have a natural birth in the hospital with her. Um, for a, a lot of reasons, but... So we go to our 39 week appointment and we already knew that she was measuring pretty small at like the last few appointments um, and we got a growth ultrasound and she had dropped down to like the fourth percentile for growth. So my midwife said that I needed to be induced because she was growth restricted and would grow better on the outside than on the inside. That kind of sucked because it basically like you know blew my whole plan I definitely did not want to be induced I wanted to have things happen naturally to be able to labor at home and all that good stuff but you know it is what it is it's best for her so we go to the hospital Friday night a little after seven um, we get checked in and everything and they start the first medication I'm pretty sure it's called Cervidil it's like a 12 hour medicine that they insert and it's supposed to soften your cervix. Cause when I went in, I was not um, dilated at all. So they started the Cervidil and we just kind of hung out. It was me, my husband and my doula were all there. Um, and after the check-in process and they inserted it, nothing was happening, like really nothing. So we sat around and talked for a while. My doula went home. Me and Chris just watched some TV and then Chris went home because he needed to pick up some stuff that we had forgotten. And yeah, I like was feeling maybe some cramps here and there, but it was virtually nothing. <laughs> um, I slept all right, like the bed wasn't that comfortable. Plus my mind was going like so much. Are you covering your face? She is, she's like, no photo. Weirdo. So yeah, like my mind was, you know, racing, kind of thinking of all the things that were about to happen and all the possibilities. So I slept, oh, I don't know, probably like four or five hours. And then we got up the next day, they took the Cervidil out. I got, okay, so my midwife had warned me about this. The Cervidil makes your, like, down there region really really sensitive and she said when you get checked after the cervidil it's gonna suck like it's gonna be really bad and it sucked it was really bad in fact if i think of like the single most pain i was in the entire labor and delivery process it was probably getting checked that time I, it's just oh i mean it was like i was like seconds away from telling her like you have to stop you have to stop it was it was bad um but she checked me and i was like a one so my midwife wasn't there so um at the time like back up the ob uh said to give me i don't remember the name of medication it's another c it's another c word but this one's like a pill instead of a strip that is another cervix softener um and this one only goes in for four hours so they put that in um and luckily though that one doesn't irritate the area as much so getting checked like after that one time did not hurt nearly as badly so right they inserted that and i could actually kind of start to feel contractions at that point but it still was just mostly like cramp kind of feeling it was i mean virtually nothing <laughs> like especially if i compare it to how you know the night ended up going so after four hours with that new cervix softener i had dilated to like a one to two um 
still was nothing but i honestly wasn't really feeling that much so i'm not surprised that i didn't dilate and at that point was when my midwife wanted to insert uh the balloon which what it, i did not understand what a balloon was before uh my like i had one i guess so it goes in and it like fills up on either side of the cervix and so that way each contraction it like puts extra pressure on the cervix and it helps it dilate a lot faster um so she inserted that it didn't like the whole insertion process didn't really hurt i mean it just basically felt like getting checked um she inserted it and filled it up but basically right after she put it in i had my first real contraction i don't know if it was just like having my cervix all messed around with or what that kind of made my body be like okay let's get this show on the road so i was that just kind of surprised me and i would say that was the hardest like part of the whole thing was when it would kind of go zero to 60 all of a sudden and i was just like okay this is the new like feeling i have to deal with and it was just it took a few contractions to kind of get the hang of what that was going to feel like i guess so right that my first real contraction was just you know like a tight cramp kind of feeling and um it was intense for the moment because i would have been virtually feeling nothing up to this point so she gets that inserted Chris had actually, at this point, he had gone home to sleep a little bit because he did not sleep at all the night before, maybe 30 minutes, um, but he works nights, so he's used to staying up at night, and I knew I was going to want him awake for when things got serious, so he went home to sleep. Um, but my doula was there, and she was like, after right after I got the thing inserted, she's like, okay, let's walk around a little bit, which I was kind of like, oh my gosh, but I just, like, I just had my first real contraction. I don't know if I'm ready for this, but I did. I got up and it's the weirdest freaking feeling because the like tubing from the balloon is just hanging down below your legs so as you're walking down around like you have this thing just swinging in between your legs um and it's like inserted or it's connected to something that's in you i don't know it was it was a weird feeling so we start walking around the halls and every time i had a contraction like i had to stop i couldn't talk it was like and in fact, I didn't even realize I was doing this. My doula told me after I was like tensing up and like kind of like shying away from the pain, which is not really what you're supposed to do. Um, but it was, yeah, it was different. So we walk around for, I think we just walked around one time. I was kind of not having it. I wanted to lay back down at that point and just get my mind around it, get a better handle on things. Um, especially after she told me how intense I was being. I really focused on relaxing at that point and it helped the contractions like to not hurt as bad, just relaxing through them and not kind of going into them with so much fear and just mentally being, I don't know, ready for them, if that makes sense. So Chris had come back from his nap and my doula ended up leaving at that point so she could get some sleep because still at this point, even though it was like, I was having contractions, but we weren't close or anything. And uh, as I was laying in bed, they actually kind of started to get like less and less intense to the point where I actually took like a 30 minute nap. Um, where, you know, maybe a contraction would wake me up sometimes, but over the next few hours, I think she inserted the balloon around 10 and by three, Things had really slowed down. I wasn't like feeling them nearly as much. Um, and that is when I had starbitocin, which was something that really scared me before. But they started me at a, like the lowest thing, like one unit, and I was gonna increase every 30 minutes. Was it every 30? Yeah. So it was just me and Chris there hanging out and they started the Pitocin and it kind of started to kick my contractions back up a little bit, but not much. Um, I remember when I got up to like about three units is when they had gotten kind of back to the point where they were when I had first had the balloon inserted where I was breathing through them and not really able to talk 
so much through them. Um, but even still, like, I would seriously rate the pain as like a five or six. It was, you know, not very bad. I was definitely able to manage it. I like had raised my bed up all the way and was kind of like leaning over it a little bit. Um, Chris was rubbing on my back and there were some times where I could feel the tightness like move into my back and that definitely hurt worse than when it was in the front but for the which I guess is what back labor is but for the most part it was all like kind of in the front just where you would have your normal like period cramps at I guess um and we I would sit on the exercise ball some and I was up like leaning over the bed some just kind of moving around and was like holding on to Chris some it definitely like felt good to kind of like squat into the contraction a little bit. I was kind of like bending my knees, moving up and down through it. Um, just like kind of like that rocking up and down helped a lot. The only thing which would make sense for me to be on the exercise all more, but the thing I really didn't like about it is it just like, I felt like my belly was just in the way when I was sitting like that, especially sitting so low. And my belly was like resting up on my legs. I don't know why it just felt like kind of icky. So, they were increasing the Pitocin and increasing the Pitocin. I think it was somewhere around five units that I was just like, okay, like things are picking up fast. Like this is hurting worse and worse. If it really increases this much every time they increase that Pitocin, I don't know how I'm gonna make it with them going every half hour like this. Like I really started to kind of doubt myself and the pain was getting worse. And the worst part was not the actual pain itself, but just knowing that it was gonna happen again and again and again. And, you know, I knew I could get through each contraction, but could I get through hours and hours more of contractions? That was kind of where I was getting a little doubtful. And the fact that with that balloon in, they can't check you. The balloon is supposed to fall out at four centimeters. So here I am thinking, okay, I'm still probably like a two or three because the balloon's not coming out. Uh, I have so much more to go. I can't know where I'm at because they can't check me. This is pretty intense and I could be like this for like 12 or 24 more hours. I have no idea. And definitely starting just to kind of get some negative thoughts at that point. Um, well, it was probably around six, like five or six in the evening we tried getting in the shower and like I couldn't get the shower head to like go where I needed it to go because I wanted the hot water like on the spot where it hurt but I couldn't get it off of the little thing I was connected to so I was just like basically spraying myself getting wet halfway really cold because I was naked in the shower and it I was so frustrated at that point of the shower not helping being like in pain not knowing where I'm at and this was like I would say the lowest point of the whole like experience this was the point where I was like I don't think I'm gonna make it I think I'm gonna ask for an epidural like I don't know it was the only time that I really doubted myself was this kind of like I'm probably like a 30 minute span of this happening and I also at this time told Chris to ask my doula to come back because I was like I I need some help <laughs> Like just mentally, I needed some help. Um, so I get out of the shower and I just lay back in the bed at this point. I was done moving around. I was done trying to progress things. I just wanted to lay down and recoup and figure out how I'm gonna deal with this. So my doula comes back and my midwife actually had come in around the same time. Um, oh, before this even happened, the nurse had come in and asked how I was doing and I was just like I I don't know I was like I, I feel like it's pointless I feel like I'm going through all these contractions and I can't even know if I'm progressing or not and then she said something to me that actually really helped she said like does it really matter like what would it change if you knew how dilated you were and I was like oh yeah I guess it doesn't because at the end of the day like I could be a three and then dilate really quickly and have her in a few hours or I could be like a five I mean I shouldn't have been because the balloon was still in but I could be a five and then it goes slowly for the rest of the time so 
it kind of when she said that it kind of helped out a little bit with some of my negative thoughts but i still was just kind of over it i guess um i was over the pitocin every time they came and increased it i was like are you serious uh i ended up getting up to about seven units when my doula had come back and my midwife was there and they were talking to me you need to prepare yourself for like the long game like my doula even said i'm thinking it's going to be sometime tomorrow evening which kind of like oh it sucks to hear at the moment because i was thinking it was going to be like early in the morning on the next day which would have been sunday um so i was kind of mentally preparing myself for that and she pushed it even further so i was just, just like wow, I have to just figure out how I'm gonna do this. That's a long time. This was around probably seven, yeah, like around 7 p.m. that they were there. Or was it? It was a little bit later, maybe it was eight. <laughs> so during this sort of like pep talk I was getting from my doula and midwife about just getting mentally prepared for a long journey, I was like, okay, these contractions, they're like moving into my legs and my thighs. Um, and my midwife, she did say, well, you know, she's probably getting lower and that's, you know, why you're getting that pain there. Um, and did encourage me to get up. So I got up, I sat on the exercise ball, the very next contraction, I said, it's just like fluid just came out everywhere. And <laughs> I said to my midwife, I was like, uh, I think my water broke. And she was like, oh, did it? I like yeah, either that or the balloon popped. I, I don't even know if that can happen. Cause I didn't see the balloon. I have no idea like what kind of texture it is. She's like, well, like it could happen, I'll check it. And so I, you know, I've been on the ball for like a second, got back in the bed so she could check it. And sure enough, the balloon was intact and my water had broke. So she said, you know, at that point she wanted to take the balloon out. Um, and we went through that process, which kind of sucked. Cause like I had to just be laying on my back this whole time while she was taking the balloon out and not able to move around or anything. Um, but I think I only maybe had one contraction during that time. It's kind of hard to remember. <laughs> and she checked me and said I was like a six to seven. So that was, oh my gosh, so freaking relieving because the balloon was supposed to fall out of the four. So here I am thinking I'm in all this freaking pain and I'm probably like three centimeters dilated when I don't know why it didn't fall out, but it didn't. And I was at like a six to a seven. So that was so good to hear and was a great time for me to have something positive like in my brain because then the like the pain went up at that point because before it was like I could manage it every time I was just getting frustrated with how long this was going to take but now the pain kind of became real and I swear one of the worst parts of this whole process was how nauseous I got um because you're sitting here and just trying to deal with like these sensations but then also feeling sick on top of it I don't know it I just I wasn't having it I did not like feeling nauseous but my doula had put some peppermint oil in my little sick bag that I had and that I just kind of like was sniffing it through the contractions because it did help um help take the nausea down and help me just kind of deal with the contraction rather than just thinking about being sick so I was still in the bed, like, you know, for probably, probably like, an, it was a while, I don't know, at least 30 minutes, maybe an hour I was laying in the bed because after she got the balloon out and checked me, she said that she had felt, um, <laughs> she felt Bobby's hand like up on her head and wanted to try and like push it back down so that like her head could really be pushing on the cervix and help opening it and stuff um so she did she tried pushing her hand but the little girl did not want to move it in fact she was like pushing back against the midwife's hand she said it was a really weird feeling to just kind of like be like touching someone's hand while they're still inside another person <laughs> uh but yeah she just did not want to move her little hand um and one thing like every time i had to be like checked or basically anytime anyone went up there the next contraction was worse so it did kind of suck to have be having to be messed with so much at this point because every time the next contraction would be a lot more intense 
every time I like moved and changed positions, the next contraction would be really intense. But one good thing that came from her, you know, messing around trying to move her hand is she said I was probably an eight at that point. So things were really like moving and grooving and I was kind of even past the point of thinking of how long is this gonna take? Cause I was just so in it at this, like my mind was so focused on getting through the contractions. I was moaning through them <laughs> because they were intense. It was just a lot of sensation. I don't even wanna say pain because I don't know, they were just intense. And and so after being in the bed for probably like an hour, she you know, said I should probably get up and get on the ball. Um, so I did that again, I got up, and at this point they had suggested I also try the nitrous. Um, and I wasn't even thinking in my mind like, oh, I can use some help, I need help. I was just focused on getting through every contraction. And just, that was my, that was the only thing I was basically thinking of and the fact that I was nauseous. Um, but when they offered the nitrous, I was like, okay, sure, of course I'll take something that might help out a little bit. Um, the only thing I was so worried, I was like, I just don't want it to make me nauseous. I was like, does it taste or smell or anything? They were like, no, it, it doesn't. <laughs> You'll be fine. Um, so I get back on the ball. I'm kind of like leaning up on the bed and they give me the nitrous, which just kind of looks like a breathing mask. Um, and explain to me how to use it and stuff. So for my next contraction, I try breathing through the mask. Um, and at first, I like I hated it because I didn't even realize I was doing this until I couldn't do it. But for each contraction, I was taking just like the biggest breath in and just kind of like going, uh, like moaning it out. <laughs> um, and in my head, it, I don't even know how this makes sense, but like if I could be louder than the pain, then I wouldn't hurt which it worked i don't know it doesn't make sense but it worked so when i put the mask on i couldn't get that big breath in because it's you're breathing kind of like through some tubing and so i was like <gasps> like it just took longer and those few seconds of not getting the breath in i just didn't like i felt crowded i felt like i couldn't breathe right not that i couldn't breathe but i couldn't get that big gulp of air in um but i still tried it i got through that contraction and I went through the next contraction and by that point I was actually feeling the effect of the nitrous which just gives you like, I don't know, how do I explain it? Just a, like a calm, kind of a high feeling, not like smoking weed kind of high, but just like elevated mood, I guess would be the best way to put it. Um, and I liked the feeling I was getting, but I just couldn't stand not getting the breath. So. From then on, I was kind of breathe as my contraction was starting, I would use the nitrous, but then I just have to put it down during the contraction because I needed that big gulp of air. Um, I can't even like remember enough about how it felt to even describe it. But I do remember asking my doula, I was like, is this transition? <laughs> and she said, yes. And I was like, is this the worst part? And she said, yes. And I said, okay, so it's, it's not that bad. <laughs> Which was really stupid of me to say because the next contraction was so much worse and lasted longer. Um, but in reality, it it's not that it wasn't that bad. I felt like I could handle it. And that's kind of what I meant, even when I said that. The pain, the feeling, it was intense. But I knew every contraction had it. Even in the worst part of it, I was like, okay, well, this is going to be over. Um... And not every contraction is the same. Some are worse than others. And you just kind of have to roll with it. Like, you don't know what's how the next contraction is going to feel. So you just, like, you live through it. You deal with it as it comes. And for me, that was, like, deep breathing and, like, being louder than the pain. And it was manageable. Like, I felt like I could handle it. <sighs> Until I had a contraction that was pretty intense and I started to gag and that was just a terrible feeling I mean and it was like an intense gag like it was loud and pretty gross sounding I'm sure and oh, I was just like please please don't let me throw up which I didn't I gagged a few times like pretty hard and towards the end of the contraction 
I pushed. And that was such an insane feeling to me, the whole pushing, because I've heard people say, like, you can't help but push. It's just something that happens. I didn't realize how much that was true until it happened. I was just having a contraction and all of a sudden was pushing. And I, like, had no control over it. And my midwife, she asked me, she was like, okay, are you, like, puking or pushing? I was like, I'm pushing. I said, I'm pushing, I think. I said, is it, does it feel like pooping? And they said, yeah, that's, that's, that's close. I was like, okay, then that's what is, that's what's going on. I feel like cause this whole time I had no idea what I was doing. I'd never had a baby before. And uh, <laughs> just the, like, sometimes the amount of like uncertainty was kind of funny because I was always just like, is this supposed to happen? Am I like, can I push now? Because no one, you know, like you would see like on TV shows or something, no one had told me I'm at 10 centimeters, it's time to push. My body just started pushing. And so I did, I, was, I pushed some and the contraction was still kind of hanging on a little bit, but it like dulled enough to where I could like talk to people. Cause my midwife, she said, okay, it's time to get on the bed. I was like, oh, I don't know, I'm not ready to move. And she's like, no, like we need to get on the bed now. She's a small baby and this could happen pretty quickly. So, uh, they helped me onto the bed and they were there, so how, what position do you want to be in? And I was like, I don't know. It's like, I'm just trying to get through the next contraction. I have no idea. I can't make a decision right now. And they basically decided for me that I was going to be on all fours or no, on my knees and like the back of the bed was up and I was just like holding on to the back of the bed. So then the next contraction came and it was super intense. Because like I said, like every time I moved positions, the next one would be worse. And this one was like an intense contraction. I was pushing and I could like feel, this was like the first time I would say I felt like real pain. Cause I could feel like her moving, which kind of like was burning and stretchy. Even before she was like crowning it, the moving part hurt. Um, to be honest, like people say transition is the worst part. I kind of felt like starting pushing was the worst part, even though, you know, it's, it's good because you're getting close and you're doing something. It was, that was the most painful to me was like the first couple contractions of pushing. That being said, I only pushed through like three or four contractions. I kind of don't really remember, um, before she was born. So I wasn't pushing for a very long time, but yeah, that first contraction after I got up on the bed was intense and it hurt and I was even like I don't know about this position I was like this hurts really bad and my midwife she was like well it's kind of gonna hurt no matter what at this point so I like in my head I wanted to move but I wasn't gonna move like I couldn't just fathom making a decision of how to be or changing my body position at this point I just like I wanted to move but I wasn't going to so <laughs> oh also I pooped and peed actually um and people say you don't care in the moment I did I was super embarrassed and I was like oh why is this happening like in my head I was like I don't want to be pooping on top of everything else in fact I even I told them I was like oh, I'm pooping and they're like it's okay I was like I'm so sorry and I think my midwife was like it's okay like I've been peed on like you don't worry it's fine no one's offended here um and the next contraction came and I like it was less than the first one after I had gotten on the bed but you know I could still it still hurt and I pooped again <laughs> I think I remember saying the poop it just keeps coming <laughs> oh I was like I was so grossed out about it I don't know um Okay, so right, like she moved again and it hurt again and I was starting to feel like the pressure of her like moving down and I, th I said something about like, I was like, oh, this is really gonna hurt, isn't it? Because at the mo at that time, I had, she hadn't like started crowning yet. I was just like, the pushing part was hurting. And so I was like, oh my gosh, if it hurts just to move her down, getting her out's gonna suck so bad. Um, and I had that another contraction where this time I, I could feel that she was like close. I couldn't necessarily tell that she was like crowning because I had no idea what that was going to feel like. 
my midwife said, uh, asked me if, I said, I don't even remember what she said, but she asked me if I wanted to feel her head. So I guess she must have been right there, like, crowning. And I was like, no, I, I want to, like, completely ignore that something is coming out of me right now. Because my mentality before then and always, like, has been, if I just ignore it, if I just tell myself I'm fine, I'll be fine. So she, at that point, I guess, was crowning. And, I mean, I could feel, like, some burning. It wasn't... Like, people sit, call it, like, the ring of fire. It was not fire. It was burning and pressure. And, in fact, the kind of the longer she sat there, the less it hurt. Um, because after that contraction where she had moved down and was crowning, I swear I didn't have another contraction for, like, five or six, maybe even seven minutes. I don't know. It felt like eternity. I was just kind of sitting there. I was like, okay, so like, what's going on? Like, when am I gonna have another contraction? I'm like, I'm calm, I'm cool, I'm ready for the next one now. And and I kind of was just like, starting to get really happy. Like, I was just smiling and it was like, didn't even care about pain anymore at this point. I was like, oh my gosh, she's right here. Like, I'm about to meet her. She's, it's so close, Let's bring it on, I don't care anymore. And the next contraction came and I just remember like, feeling her just slip out. I don't even think she was like born like head first, then shoulders, then body. I think she just shot out like at least from what I remember. I couldn't see anything. Um, and her actually coming out, it didn't hurt any worse than her just moving down. It, you know, it felt exactly the same. And so when she was born, she was actually born with like both hands out. She shot her hands out and like dove out of me basically. And yeah, she she just she came out. I was like, at this point, are you showing how you were born? Throwing your hands up. Uh, at this point, I feel like the world was just kind of moving in slow motion because she was born, and I was like, okay, when's she gonna cry? When's she gonna cry? I want to hear her cry. And she started crying. I was like, oh my god, I want to see her. I want to see her. And I kept trying to like turn around, like no, you like stay just for a second. I just wanted to turn around. I wanted to see her so bad and it was probably like a few seconds and it felt like 10 minutes that I like couldn't turn around. Um, cause like, so at this point I had the IV coming off of me and like the umbilical cord coming out of me and lots of reasons why I couldn't just flip and turn around really quick. And Chris told me later that they were like moving some stuff around trying to get me to turn like to my left. I just kept trying to go to the right. I was like, okay, can I go? And they're like, all right, turn around to the left. And I was like going the wrong way. I think someone eventually had to be like, no, honey, turn to this side. Uh, Cause I couldn't like, I couldn't hear or focus. I just like wanted to see her so bad. And so I, they got me turned around and situated and there she was like so freaking little and just crying. And it was so weird and I was like laughing and crying at the same time and they handed her to me and I was like trying to tear my bra off because like I wanted to do skin to skin in fact I intended to like have it off before I started pushing but everything just happened so fast that I didn't get a chance to so I was like trying to tear it off and like put her up on my chest and was she even gunky I don't remember like I think that they wiped her off pretty good before they gave her to me and I do remember like kind of seeing the down there area and being like, that's grosser than I thought I was going to be. <laughs> but like kind of not caring at the same time because I had a tiny little baby. Oh my gosh, she was just so little and she was right there and she was crying and it was like the cutest little cry. Uh, uh, I loved it. I loved every moment of it. Um... Oh my gosh. And then, so she was like on my chest and was like starting to like lift her head up and like move it around and I was like what the heck I didn't know a newborn could move like that I thought they were just like so like floppy and couldn't do anything but she was moving her little head all around and did I did I try and nurse her right away I don't even remember like it was pretty soon after and I ended up having a small tear my midwife said if she had been born normal, like with her arms down or whatever, it probably wouldn't have torn. But it's just because she kind of like shot her hands out as she was being born that that's probably what caused me to tear. But I couldn't tell. Like I, I would not have known if I tore or not. In fact, like I said, her being born didn't even like hurt worse than just her moving down. 
so yeah they stitched me up and that kind of sucked i don't know like oh and they the placenta came out i didn't hurt at all i didn't hardly even feel it i i was like just so just looking at her but the stitching part did kind of hurt a little not bad but you just feel like pokes like because they numb you first and it's you know you feel pokes and then as they're doing it like I still kind of felt pokes here and there and it was whatever not pleasant but I was distracted so and, oh yeah so she was five pounds eleven ounces oh god excuse me so she was small but not too small you was all perfect ten fingers ten toes super healthy she was, oh, and I didn't even say, she was born at 10.32. So from the time my water broke to the time she was born was less than an hour. If you would have asked me, like, right after she was born, you know, how bad was it? I would have been like, it barely even hurt. It was fine. I was great. It was perfect. I was, like, but after having, like, a few weeks to kind of think about it, process it, and being able to watch my labor video, I realized, like, a little more of... Like, kind of remember how I actually felt more in the moment. But I was, though, so, so happy with the way my, like, labor and delivery turned out. Because when I heard I had to be induced, it scared the crap out of me. And I instantly was like that. I was basically like that. I was very, very thankful to have the medical team that I did. They were wonderful. And everyone was just, like, lighthearted and positive the whole time. Um, said what needed to be said, but like it was never stressful or scary more than it had to be. I mean, I was gonna, sometimes I was a little nervous about like what was gonna happen next, but I think that's pretty normal. So I hope you enjoyed hearing our story of how little Miss Bobby came into the world. Um, comment down below any questions and about our experience or anything. And thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna make you wake up, little girl. Bye. <laughs> Look at her stretch. Say bye, everybody. Cute little girl.